Hi, I'm Alex Archbull, and I've been buying and selling antiques since I was nine years old. From basements to scrapyards, I'll look just about anywhere I can to find lost antiques and collectibles. And sometimes I'll go big and buy everything. I never know what's going to happen or who I'm going to meet. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. Hi guys, welcome to today's episode. I just got back from an estate where I went through a house and purchased some things. Um, I'm hoping that we did okay. I always just grab what I think looks kind of cool. Uh, in this case, there was some assorted jewelry. Um, there was some uh, Pyrex and some other stuff. So we shall go through it together and see if uh, there's a few treasures in the mix here. Uh, I was told it was mostly costume jewelry and just assorted stuff. I'm hoping that there's at least one or two surprises in the mix, there usually is, uh, but we'll see. So let's tear through some jewelry, let's look at some antiques. Uh, there's some old coins and watches and stuff in here too, Pyrex and stuff. Let's tear into it and see what we found. Now with this assortment of jewelry, I was told that it was all costume jewelry, there was nothing good in here. Um, and so going into that, uh, you know, you hope that maybe there's something a little bit better. Um, that said, even, uh, even so a lot of this is, uh, from what I understand, 1950s to seventies era costume jewelry, which can still be pretty collectible. Um, lots of matched earrings. It looks like these are all sort of the bigger earrings with the clip backs. And some are quite heavy. I mean, this is a substantial piece of that. Would, your ear would, your earlobe would be drooping down to the floor. It's got this uh, heavy-duty clip on the back because um, there's no way you, your pierced ear would probably rip off of that thing. That's got some weight to it. Um, I am noticing though that there are some sterling silver hoops. That's a pretty big sterling hoop. Um, there's some very interesting-looking sort of uh, artist-made earrings. And surprisingly, uh, well, nothing ever really surprised me anymore, but um, people do actually uh, seek out and collect um, artist-made uh, jewelry like that. That is probably, you know, late 50s, early 60s kind of era. And so what I'm going to do is try and go through this. Oh, there's a ring. Looks at like a very 60s kind of uh, peace, love, and hippie sort of daisy ring. That's kind of cool. I'm not sure the material. It's like a uh, bone. I think it's bone. So we'll kind of sift through this a little bit and we'll see what we can find. I'm hoping uh, that's the same type of earring, but uh, I, I'm hoping I can find the matches for a couple of these in here anyway. Uh, majority of this stuff though is, from what I can tell, fairly common. And I'll probably end up just putting this out as a whole bin as it is. You know, I'll pick out a couple of pieces that I think might be a little bit more interesting. I'll double check that, see if that's silver. Um, you know, so we'll we'll pull a couple things out of there that might be a little bit better. And gosh, where is that other earring? Hey, Melissa. Melissa, who is sitting over there with a the dog right now. This seems this seems wrong that I'm sitting here looking through earrings. I was peeking over from there. Yeah, I saw you, you were checking this stuff out earlier. Um, can you see if you can find this other earring in here somewhere? I'm going to give you this whole tray. Okay. We're looking for that one. It's okay. like a wavy square. Oh, hang on. That's the other silver one I was looking for. All right. I you found the wavy square. No, I didn't find the wavy square. Um, while Melissa digs through that, um, this looks like it's more uh, silver and gold tone. And I say silver gold tone because um, I don't know that it's actually silver gold. That's one of those magnetic kind of health bracelets. I can't, what were those called? Where you put it on your wrist, it's supposed to like. Oh, you know, right. is that what that is? Yeah, it has like the little magnets in the end there. But apparent, some people would say it had health properties. Other people would say they don't. But anyway, that's what that thing is. Uh, right, lots of little hoops and things. And I'm looking right now to see if there's any stamps or marks that might have. Because you just really never know. Like... Um, whether you're gonna find something that has a little bit more value or a little bit better than something else. It's always worth kind of having a little bit better look through this stuff just because uh, certain brand names can make all the difference. Hey, thanks, you're good. There we go, matching set. I got more in here. 
Yeah, I thought so too. It looked like it was all matching in that area. We've got lots of little earrings. Look at these square earrings. 1887. It's 925 silver. Oh, well, that's a good sign. Tiffany and Company. And if the other one's in here, which I think it is, it's right there. Sterling Silver Tiffany and Company hoop earrings. This little earring, this little earring set right there, you would be shocked at what they would sell this for at the Tiffany store. That could be anywhere between, and I'm talking Canadian funds right now because that's where I am, uh, anywhere between $600 and $900 for a set of earrings like that new. I don't know what the retail would be on it used, but that's a really good find. Again, brand name makes all the difference. And yes, I believe that's authentic Tiffany and Company. Why do I think it's authentic? Well, uh, the lady that owned this jewelry uh, and the family did pull out what they thought was, I guess, the better stuff at some point. But her husband was a professional hockey player for many, many years. And uh, you just know there's going to be the occasional real good piece in the mix there. Nice little pendant. That looks like diamonds and... Uh, I don't know if it's sapphire, but that, that might be something worth setting aside. That's a pendant. Doesn't that look nice? Can you guys kind of get a, get a look at that? If I zoom out and then zoom back in, maybe we can see it better. That's the thing with going through uh, jewelry like this, and it's, it's a little tangled up, so we'll get that earring off of there, is that, um, you know, with what you pay for a whole batch of, you know, quote unquote junk jewelry, that all it takes is getting a couple of little pieces like that to make the whole thing worthwhile. Um, you know what? I think I'm going to have to find our loop and just check on some of these other things because uh, somebody was shopping at the Tiffany store. It's probably going to be worthwhile for me to really have a good look at some of this other stuff. But that's a good find already and we're only into the second bin. So already out of my so-called junk jewelry, we've got some nice 50s or 60s kind of mid-century art kind of earrings. That's a, the worst description ever. Um, Mexican silver bracelet. We have silver hoops, uh, some gold pendants. And uh, we're gonna get the loop down here and we're gonna look for marks on this, but I would almost guarantee that's real. Gold with diamonds and maybe some sapphires around the edge. The Tiffany earrings. And uh, I dumped out the contents of this little jewelry box into this uh, tray so I could sort it. And I got real excited at first. I was like, oh, look. Well, I didn't make that noise, but <laughs> I thought I found a lady's Rolex. And then you start noticing that the gold plating is wearing off. You, ah, uh, real Rolex. That wouldn't be happening. Because it would be likely solid gold, not, uh, or when I say solid gold, I mean, uh, like, not 24 karat, but I mean gold all the way through. Um, so that's likely a, a replica Rolex, but still kind of neat. Um, and there were some interesting earrings in here. These are stud earrings made from uh, U.S. pennies. Actually, that's a button. I, I apologize. That's a button. It's got a button back on it. So there's a couple buttons made from pennies. But there were earrings here made from Canadian pennies. And these were wartime, 1943, World War II. They're silver-plated Canadian pennies. Maybe something sold like a, you know around that time um kind of interesting you know they've got king george on them and there's one there and the other one's right here so i do have a matching pair of those you know you always do this little sift and sort and try and find the cooler stuff it's the 1920s or 30s era uh ladies cocktail watch it's got a cracked crystal um pocket knife Made in Western Germany, so that'd be just after the Second World War, probably early 1950s. Uh, pocket watches can be collectible. This is a uh, Big Ben pocket watch. They're like they were the least expensive watch you get. This would be your uh, wear it out on the tractor in the field, and if you bang into something, just go buy another one because they were probably like a dollar or a dollar fifty, or they weren't very much when they were new. Um, so not overly valuable now, um, but you know, still kind of neat to find. And there are lots of other little, um, what I suspect might be gold earrings in here. So we are finding, did that say Cartier on the back? No, maybe not. Gosh, I have to really be careful with what I'm going through here. Cause you don't want to disregard something and find out you thought it was costume and end up being good, but finding some really neat stuff. Uh, we've got all sorts of other, um, there's silver bracelets. 
So there is some precious metal in here. So one person's junk is uh, quite literally today another person's treasure. You got some nice brooches. Unfortunately, um, the back is off of it and I can't tell. I, it does not look like a Sherman quality brooch to me. However, it is still pretty nice. Um, that's an older piece there. That That is a little bit better quality. So some nice, uh, like the Sherman stuff is actually more like uh, iridescent like this. And um, costume jewelry like that, you know, um, Bavarian or Czech crystal jewelry or uh, like Zorowski and uh, Sherman, all that is quite desirable. I think Melissa said that she liked this particular piece. She said it reminded, reminded her of a blue waterfall. So I'm going to set that aside. A oh, blue, a blue wave. A blue wave. Would you like this one, Melissa? I would, but I don't know where I would wear it. Well, that's the whole point of having jewelry is that you never know when you're going to need well, to wear. This nice though. Look at that. I know. You had mentioned you liked it, so you may as well keep that back. We got to at least keep something back from my lady. Oh, this looks like it's uh, carved. That rose. This is a rose pendant. Thank you. Oh, of course. That's really quite interesting. I don't know what material that's made of. It has that sort of French ivory cellulite kind of feel to it. Um, but you know, that's such intricate detail that I don't think that was cast. It really does feel like somebody carved it. So perhaps bone, perhaps horn. Um, either way, it, it's an interesting item. So um, I still have all this to sort through. Um, really, I'm gonna have to get my loop out. This box is a little worse for wear. And again, you know, just loaded with stuff. Oh, there's a cameo. There's a nice cameo pendant or brooch, I should say, right on the top. Not super old, but probably 1950s sort of air. It's fun going through stuff like this. I, I, I get the appeal because, you know, you just don't know what you're going to find. Um, other things that weren't jewelry, and which I should talk about before I just go through and do all jewelry on this episode. Um, there was about a 1940s era Harmony ukulele. Um, not a super expensive brand. It's a solid wood body. Harmony also made guitars. Um, this would have been like your um, department store catalog kind of ukulele. Back in the 40s, that whole Meli Kaliki Maka, Bing Crosby stuff was super popular. Um, a couple things that were a little bit more special that I found. Um, I want to show you this. I had mentioned that her, the, the dad or the husband of the lady whose jewelry this was um, used to play in the NHL. And this is a little uh, trophy. And I can see hockey sticks on it. And it says, I think, elite, elite hockey on it. I'm not sure exactly. I'm going to have to research that and try to figure out what that's from. But it is a little silver trophy. And next to it, we have this. Um, it's um, a barometer. It's also a trophy. But there's the fellow. His name was Len Lundy. And he played on the uh, Edmonton Flyers in the 50s, uh, Detroit Red Wings with Gordie Howe, the Blackhawks. Um, later, the Oilers was friends with Wayne Gretzky. And here we have his highest score award that they gave him in the 50s. And um, he's missing his stick. I'm going to see if maybe I can find a, a little replacement stick for that and maybe a little kind of piece of glass to go back in this barometer. But isn't that ever cool to find these pieces of uh, hockey history that you just didn't expect? Also, the, the Pyrex, um, well, it's a little bit more on the unusual side. This is what they call the black snowflake pattern, um, which you don't see too terribly often. And it's a nice casserole dish with the lid. We've got it sort of protected there. But the best piece, and possibly the best piece of Pyrex that I have ever found, is this. It is the uh, 1950s atomic burst in the mint green. And it's an absolutely pristine condition with its original lid, the retail value on that could be north of $1,000. In fact, there are some people online that are asking $1,900 Canadian for just this one dish. Now, I didn't, 
they were aware that it might it would have some value, so I did pay a little bit of money for it, of course, but they didn't want to take the time to try and sell it on Etsy or eBay, so I ended up with it. Um, so, But that is an absolutely perfect condition. It's a lovely piece of Pyrex, and just uh, so pleased that we were able to, uh, to get it today. I'm sure somebody who's a Pyrex collector would love to add that, and I might have been even a promotional sort of item. I think, uh, being that he was a hockey player, she said that they were given some of these things as promotional gifts and, and such. Um, which is why there's these one-off sort of colors and items. But how cool is that, don't you think? In this box, we have an assortment of vintage coins. Now, uh, this had been turned into a pendant at some point. It looks like it's a, uh, well, 1967 half penny. Queen Elizabeth II, it looks like uh, it's been plated. But there are some silver coins like this 1958 Canadian dollar. Um, there's uh, multiple, uh, that's a 1964 Canadian silver dollar. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's about 10 silver dollars. Um, this is a um, Morgan dollar, 1864. And we'll check on the front and see uh, if it has, uh, like if it's Carson City or where it might be from. I felt a bug crawling on me just then. I had to stop and scratch my neck. There's oftentimes little stamps on here, but that might require the loop again. Oh, under right under the D, actually. Let's see if we can zoom in. Boy, I, I'm paying attention to this, and I'm not paying attention to the camera, but um, right underneath that D in dollar, there is a little stamp mark, and that would tell you what mint it came from. I'm going to have a look, and I'll tell you. Okay, well, after looking into the loop there, it's... A, it's an 1884 Morgan dollar, but there is no mint mark on it. Um, so it's likely not from one of the really rare uh, mintages. However, um, there's quite a range of uh, coins in here. That's so uh, uh, commemorative of the uh, reign of King George. Um, there's quarters in here. I saw this looks like an older 50 cent piece, 1952, before they had the Kennedy 50 cent pieces. Mexican currency, 1964. Uh, but then you see things like that. Like I can tell that's a young Queen Victoria on the back of this penny. And that is an English penny from the 1800s. It's so worn. It looks like it used to say 1852 on it. Um, that's a very worn English penny. It should be nice and crisp, kind of like this. It's just a 1921. So we'll go through and see uh, certain uh, Canadian pennies and currencies and American pennies. Here's a, a couple old Canadian pennies in the mixer, 1920. And what year do we have here? 1894, that's a very early, that's a Queen Victoria penny. Um, Canada was, uh, you know, less than 30 years old when that penny came out. 1867. So when we came around. So lots of good, uh, one, what does this say? One quarter Anna India, 1913, uh, under, uh, as a British colony when India was part of the Br British colonies. So lots of interesting coins in this batch here. So I'll make sure, I think I've got some coin holders upstairs somewhere that I can put these in and get them ready for sale. I'll close that up for now and then I'll continue going back through the jewelry. In with all that jewelry was also this. It's a uh, Gold Phil Walton pocket watch. It didn't have a crystal, but lucky for me, I did. And so now it does too. And on top of that, it's working. I'll set the time in a little bit here and I'll see if it's keeping time, but that's a nice little gold face hunter style watch. Um, the hunter case means that it has the folding front on it like this. If you don't have that, it's an open face watch. Um, it's a mid-sized, kind of a small one. Uh, there was a couple watches, and this is kind of the tray of better stuff that I've uh, set aside here. Found a set of gold Mercedes earrings, kind of random. There was a uh, Bulova wristwatch. It's a very early, it's the Accutron with the tuning fork. Um, the very early uh, electric watch. And 
I had a battery for it because I've had some of these before and it's working fine. That's actually the same movement and same case as the Bull of a Space View, which is a really desirable watch. I put a new band on there. Probably have to polish the crystal, but otherwise that's good. Um, haven't put a new battery in the fake Rolex yet. We'll see about that. But this is all silver, gold, um, and, you know, Cameo, the Tiffany earrings, all kinds of good stuff. Again, all came out of quote unquote junk jewelry. So good to take a second look at that stuff. Um, but probably the best pieces that I got, uh, these are all silver dollars and silver 50 cent pieces. There's probably about six or $700 worth of silver coins there. Some of them sell between uh, 40 and $50 each. So you can see how that kind of adds up. Um, the 50 cent pieces usually go for about 15 to $20 each, but still probably about two to $300 there. And you know, an equal three or 400. So pretty good value. This little trophy apparently is a Lifetime Achievement Award trophy given by the Swedish Hockey Association celebrating a career that spanned 1955 to 1980. And of course, the Len Lundy highest scorer from the Edmonton Flyers 1957-1958 season. Um, I did manage to find this exact figure on eBay that had his stick. So I'm gonna just put the stick back in his hands uh, and will make him more complete. I'll have to figure out what to do with this uh, damaged barometer, but that is kind of the, the prized thing in, in my mind is this original trophy that was awarded to Len back in the 50s for uh, scoring so high in a very early hockey team. And they were the um, farm team for the Detroit Red Wings, I believe, back at that time. So um, he went to uh, the Red Wings, played with Gordie Howe after that. Anyway, had a great long career. And uh, I'm honored that I was able to get that piece from that collection. So I'll have to give a little bit of a dusting here, clean it up a little bit more. I've tightened the screws on that and uh, we'll figure out what to do with the uh, missing cover for the barometer. But it probably look good with an old clock in there too, but we'll figure that out later on. Okay, well, I have to admit that was a pretty fun adventure. It went from me thinking I wasn't gonna find anything at all to finding some really cool, rare, hockey artifacts. The best part is I just got a call back from them and they said, come on back. If you like dad's hockey stuff, we found a whole bunch more. So who knows what I'm going to find. Stay tuned for that adventure. I'm excited. I got cleaning, sorting and uh, stuff to put away and uh, I've got to go get back to work. I got more stuff to go look at. So make sure to subscribe to the channel guys. If you like these videos, um, we do sell stuff at auction pretty regularly. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do about the, uh, Pyrex dish. I mean, I guess that's like the uh, the holy grail of Pyrex dishes. So it's probably going to be worth um, maybe hanging on to and trying to find the right buyer for that. But a lot of really great stuff came out of today's collection. I was fun. It's fun for me when I find stuff I've never seen before. So subscribe, uh, hit that like button, and guys, we'll see you all soon. As always, bye for now. Bye, everybody.